Let's practice writing a proof together. Now, this particular proof is dealing with parallel lines and transversals, so let's try to apply anything we know about those to this proof here. All right, let's start with our given information. I like starting with this given information because it gives us some numbers that we can work with. So we know the measure of angle FED and the measure of angle CGA are both 45 degrees, and this information is given. So this is angle FED, and we're gonna label that as 45 degrees. And this is angle GCA, which is also 45 degrees. Next, we know that ray CA is parallel to ray ED, and this is given. And so we know these two rays are parallel. Now, why are they telling us that these two lines are parallel? Well, hopefully to make this a little bit more clear, if we extend ray DE a little bit longer, and if we extend ray EF a little bit longer, we can see that it's a transversal for that ray of CA and ED. Now, if these two lines are parallel to each other and we have a transversal, that must mean that this angle over here and this angle over here are going to be congruent to each other because they are corresponding angles. So let's go ahead and write in that this is going to be 45 degrees. And the statement we're going to write, and so we'll say that angle FED, which is this angle right over here, is going to be congruent to angle FBA, which is this angle right over here. We can say this by the corresponding angles theorem. Now, if we know that these two angles are congruent to each other, we can go ahead and say that the measure of their angles are equal to each other by the congruence property of equality. So the reason why we can say that this angle here of FBA is equal to 45 degrees is because the measure of angle FED is 45 degrees. And so if we use substitution here, we can go ahead and say that the measure of angle FBA is equal to 45 degrees. We can say this by the transitive property of equality or the substitution property of equality. All right, now remember we're trying to prove that ray EF is parallel to ray CG. Those are these two rays over here. But if we go ahead and extend them to make them a little bit more clear and focus in on ray CA, so we can see that CA is actually a transversal for ray CG and EF. Remember, we were given that the measure of angle CGA was 45 degrees, and then we established that the measure of angle FBA was also 45 degrees. So we can say that the measure of these two angles are equal to each other. And I'm going to say that by the substitution property of equality. And so if their angles are equal to each other, then we can say that these angles are congruent to each other. We can say this by the congruence property of equality, which hopefully makes sense because from line three to four, if we said the angles were congruent to each other, then their measures were going to be equal as well. And here we're saying if the measures are equal, then these angles are going to be congruent. So now that we know that this angle FBA is congruent to angle GCA, which these are corresponding angles, we can actually say that ray EF is going to be parallel to ray CG. And the justification for this is the converse of the corresponding angles theorem. So big picture here, keep in mind that in the beginning we were given that these two rays were parallel to each other, so we went ahead and used the corresponding angles theorem to say that then these two angles would be congruent. And in the end we were actually taking these two corresponding angles which are congruent, we used them to go ahead and use the converse to say that these two rays over here are going to be parallel to each other. All right, and that wraps up this proof dealing with parallel lines and transversals. If you found the video helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing with a classmate or friend who might also find it helpful. And as always, keep up the great work that you're already doing, and I'll see you in the next one.